How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and here's a breakdown for a recent music video I shot with one of my good friends, Cameron Calloway. The song is called China Blue and Cameron sent over a ton of abstract references and we really wanted to take an artistic approach to the visual style. Being that the song is called China Blue, there was obviously a lot of references with cooler tones, but Cameron also referenced a lot of James Terrell, who emphasizes the presence of space and the emotive power that it can hold. That ultimately helped lead us to the Barrick Museum at UNLV as a filming location. The gallery helped give us an open space to work with, and the white walls gave us a tremendous amount of freedom when mixing light on the day. We found a few different locations within the museum that we wanted to use, and since it was a working gallery, the art was available for us to shoot in the background. When thinking about camera, I was originally leaning towards the Gemini or Alexa, but I really wanted to explore the artistry of large format to showcase the sense of space within the museum, so I eventually landed on the FX9 for its full frame sensor. I consider large format to be anything that's full frame and larger since Super 35 has been the gold standard for decades, and the more I use it, the more I actually prefer it since it carries such a standard look. Large format is cool and all, but I don't think it's for everything, and like most things, is easily overhyped in the world of YouTube. Shooting large format should be a conscious decision, not because someone says it looks cinematic. Another reason I chose the FX9 was its color accuracy. I knew we'd be experimenting with color, and the FX9 does a great job with retaining color information. We paired the FX9 with the trusty Vista Primes, and large format is really where these lenses start to shine since I'm taking advantage of the FX9's full frame sensor. Whenever I use my Vista Primes on Super 35 sensors, I'm only utilizing the sweet spot of the lens towards the center of the image circle. When I move up to large format, I'm capturing more of that image circle, which really starts to bring out the characteristics of the lens. When shooting wide open, the falloff has an extremely soft quality that just engulfs your subject with bokeh while still retaining image sharpness. I really start to notice the characteristics, especially during day exteriors, and it's something that's quite difficult to describe and just much easier to show. During our scout, I noticed a clear white hallway with really great leading lines that really accentuate the geometry of the space, so I wanted to start there. Within the hallway, there were fluorescent house lights that weren't able to be turned off, so I used them to motivate our lighting. We used two overhead 8x frames as a sort of vertical book light, and we used ultra bounce on the top frame and full grid on the bottom. We mounted the second frame using Cardellini so that we were able to use the same stance for both frames. I took a color reading of the room lights to dial into our two sky panels for a perfect match. This way, we're able to achieve a perfect white between our key and room tone, so we don't have to worry about color shift in post. We pretty much went with all RGB LEDs when selecting fixtures, mainly sky panels to be specific. They're readily available, have plenty of output, and have a low power draw since outlets were pretty limited inside the museum. We added two ciders to help contain some of the spill and also give a little bit of shape and contrast to Cameron's face. To light the background, we bounced two additional sky panels into the wall to add a soft blue ambience and shot another towards the ceiling to give the texture some color. I had the Titan X2 in play as well, sitting on the floor to even out the ambience on the right side of frame. Logan was our Steadicam operator, and it was great having the freedom of movement throughout takes. We used a set of ear techs for comms so I could provide real-time feedback to the operator, which also gave our AC a heads up on where the camera would be moving. These headsets are awesome, and I much prefer them over software solutions like Unity. They're especially useful for camera teams, since you have hands-free comms that sounds crystal clear. I wanted to go with Steadicam as opposed to Gimbal because Steadicam is much more organic in my opinion. Gimbals have a very precise and robotic nature, but that's not really what we were going for. We gave Jeremy, our AC, a run for his money because most of what we shot was wide open at T15. He was using the Teradek RT, which I've previously reviewed on the channel. For our other setups, we did a traditional book light using ultra bounce on half grid, and similar to the last setup, I used two sky panels to help even out the spread for a more uniform key. I added a 40 degree LCD to the 8x to mitigate spill and a 4x floppy to help close up the book. Light is additive, so I didn't want to contaminate the wall since we're using sky panels to color our background. We were using a Vaxxus wireless system to monitor, and our kit had a handheld 7-inch, which was super convenient when lighting. It was lightweight enough to where I could just walk around and make adjustments on our lights and glance down at the monitor to see the changes. I'm actually finishing up my review of this system, and that should be out soon. For day two, we returned to my old stomping grounds, the UNLV Film Studio. I always love returning to this studio because it was where I was taught many of the principles I use today. Not to mention, there's plenty of gear available for us to use, including a Fisher dolly. I had Logan operate camera while I acted as sort of a dolly grip so I could monitor picture and move as necessary. Our main setup featured an interactive projector from one of our friends and local Vegas artist Brett Bolton who does a lot of audiovisual pieces and Cameron thought it'd be a great addition to the video. We needed a pretty large backdrop to use, so we hung a 20x ultra balance off the studio grid to project onto the white side. 
The projector was neat because we were able to cycle through a few different interactive looks and the mappings would react to Cameron's movements. We used a slightly lower shutter for the projector scenes to help with flicker, but to also further smooth out the motion blur to blend with some of the projection's visual style. For another setup, we added a plus three diopter and clear streak filter to get super tight abstract cutaways. We were pretty strapped for light, so I shot at a high base 4000 and righted down to 1000 EI for a healthier negative. If you're newer to Sony cameras, I made a previous video that details on how to expose using exposure indexes, so be sure to check that out if you have any confusion. For another setup, we flipped the set while leaving the projector in place so we can get beams of light behind Cameron, so we pumped the room full of haze so the light had a medium to travel through. Having the Fisher dolly was really helpful in this situation since I was able to pedestal up and down and reposition the angle of the beams in the background. To light, we used a Barra 60 as close as possible to Cameron so it made a soft quality of light without any additional modifiers. I don't often key faces with bare panels, but when the source is this close, the size remains large relative to the subject, so you still maintain a soft quality of light. This is often super helpful when you need to key with a ton of output or don't have any extra modifiers handy, but it only really works if you're able to work this close to talent. If you appreciate my content here on YouTube, consider checking out my Patreon where I post longer form BTS content and other industry tips that have helped me along the way. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. Overall, this was a super fun project to experiment around with a few different looks. I'm a big fan of Cameron's music, so I'm always down to collaborate in any way I can. I really love pairing the FX9 with the Tokina Vista Primes. The improved sensor clarity is a great complement to the Vista Primes large format look. Big thanks to UNLV's Barrick Museum and to some of the film students that came out to lend a hand. It's always fun meeting the next new wave of filmmakers to come out of the film program. Also, another quick shout out to Nick, who's also part of the Patreon group. He's been shooting some of the BTS for me lately, which has been instrumental in creating these videos, so please give him some thanks in the comments below. Additionally, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.